Welcome back to Trinity Bible Study. In our last session, we started into Acts chapter 13. And as we did that, we saw Paul encounter uh, a proconsul in a community and uh, led that proconsul to faith in Christ because of his gift of the Holy Spirit, which called out that which was evil and that which was sin, a particular a magician who was attempting to keep the proconsul from coming to faith in Christ. We're going to pick up in verse 13. We actually read verse 13 in our last session, but we're going to back into that just to set the stage for where we are going in the rest of the chapter. Acts chapter 13, verse 13. Now Paul and his companions put out to sea at Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But going on from Perga, they arrived in Pisidian Antioch. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. Now, he ends up in Pisidian Antioch, which is one of the four cities uh, that comprise what we call the Galatian area, or what we know as the letter Paul wrote to the Galatians. This would have been one of those four churches. And so he ends up there. Uh, he is on his first missionary journey, so he probably has been there at another point in his life, but not with the same motivation and not with the same call on his life. Picking up in verse 15. And after reading the law and the prophets, the synagogue officials sent to them, saying, Brethren, if you have any word of exhortation for the people, say it. Now here what we see is what we were talking about in one of our other sessions where Paul is uh, uh, educated in rabbinical rites and he's also a Pharisee. So when he walks in to any synagogue anywhere, he is recognized as a Jewish leader. And at some point in their gatherings, he is always given an opportunity to speak. And of course, he'll take advantage of it right here. Verse 16. And Paul stood up and mentioned with his motion with his hand. He said, Men of Israel and you who fear God, listen. The God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. And with an uplifted arm, he led them out from it. And for a period of about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. And when he had destroyed seven nations in the land of Canaan, he distributed their land as an inheritance, all of which took about 450 years. And after these things, they gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. And then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish, a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for 40 years. And after he was removed, after he removed him, he raised up David to be their king, concerning whom he also testified and said, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart, who will do all my will. From the offspring of this man, according to the promise, God has brought to Israel, to Israel's Savior, Jesus. After John had preached, proclaimed after John had proclaimed before his coming a baptism of repentance to all of the people of Israel, and while John was completing his course, he kept saying, What do you suppose that I am? I am not he, but behold, one is coming after me, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brethren, sons of Abraham's family, and those among you who fear God, to us the word of this salvation is sent out. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, recognizing neither him nor the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfill these by condemning him. And though they found no ground for putting him to death, they asked Pilate that he be executed. And when they had carried out all of that was written concerning him, they took him down from the cross and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. And for many days he appeared to those 
who came up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, the very ones who are now his witnesses to the people. And we preach to you the good news of the promise made to the fathers that God fulfilled this promise to our children in that he raised up Jesus as it is also written in the second Psalm, Thou art my son, today I have begotten thee. And as for the fact that he raised him up from the dead, no more to return to decay, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore, he also says in another psalm, Thou wilt not allow thy Holy One of Israel to undergo decay. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid amongst his fathers and underwent decay. But he whom God raised did not undergo decay. Therefore, let it be known to you, brethren, that through him forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and through him everyone who believes is freed from all things from which you could not be freed through the law of Moses. Take heed, therefore, so that the things spoken of the prophets may not come upon you. Behold, you scoffers, and marvel, and perish. For I am accomplishing a work in your days, a work which you will never believe, through someone should, though someone should describe it to you. And of course, he's reading out of Habakkuk there. And as Paul and Barnabas were going out, the people kept begging them, uh, begging that these things might be spoken to them on the next Sabbath. Now, when the meeting of the synagogue had broken up, many of the Jews and the God-fearing proselytes followed Paul and Barnabas, who, speaking to them, were urging them to continue in the grace of God. Paul is given the seat of authority to speak here in the synagogue, and he takes advantage of it. And he realizes that he has a group of primarily Jews, but he also has a group that we see uh, a phrase used that feared God in the room. These are Gentiles who were kind of like being converted into Judaism. Okay? And he calls them those who fear God and eventually calls them God-fearers. And that is the term that is put on any Gentile who is coming into the Jewish faith. And so he has primarily a majority of Jews and a few of these God-fearers some of which were probably married to the Jews, and that's how they got in there. Um, we're going to see another division of people come up in our next session, so I want to make that very clear to you. Paul preaches the pure and unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ. He takes them back to Egypt. He shows them how God worked with them and brought them through the, uh, the uh, land of Canaan and set them up and established them with judges. And, of course, he brings Samuel and Saul and David and then he takes from the lineage of David into Christ. And he shows the purity of Christ in the fact that God raised him from the dead and he did not undergo decay. Okay, in other words, his physical body never decayed. It was glorified at the resurrection. And of course, he moved about during the, with the people in a post-resurrection state of approximately 40 uh, to 50 days. And so what we have there is uh, the example of a living, glorified Christ who ascended. And so Paul tells this story completely and says, this is the fulfillment of what your prophets were talking about. But there's some of you who are never going to believe it. And, and that's the trick here. He talks to them and he says, you must believe. This is the truth. And of course, you can tell their hearts are stirred. They want him to come back the next Sabbath and teach more. Um, this is not uncommon when a rabbi or a Pharisee would come into an area, they would stay a while and teach. And so Paul is simply using his Jewish heritage to promote the gospel and to preach the gospel in these communities that he is visiting on this missionary journey. This one specifically in the region of Galatia. Well, we're going to find out that it isn't all gravy and peaches and cream, as we would say. In our next session, we will see that there can be trouble when you preach the gospel, too, especially when there's an eliteness, a mentality, 
that thinks they are special. With that, we'll pick up on our next session, and let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for your word, that we might know it better and that we might apply it as we learn and study how your gospel was spread. These things we ask in the name of Jesus and under his authority we pray. Amen.